This NBA season in the pandemic has been different, I would say. You know what I'm saying? We have players who have never been in MVP conversation before and Joel and B. We have a 36-year-old LeBron James, 18 years in the league, talking about he might be MVP. All of this. And y'all talking about some goddamn Rudy Gobert. What the hell is going on? I have no idea. the way before I start this video I am not the biggest fan of Rudy Gobert but I do understand what he gives to the game of basketball and the Utah Jazz so I might be biased in the way that might be funny I'm, I'm gonna give him some credit you know what I'm saying so Utah Jazz fans don't get mad this has been a question for a while now probably on to like third year who's the best player on the Utah Jazz because I think one of these players should be an MVP consideration. Granted, they have the best record in the league. So usually MVP goes to the best player on the best team. Some people say Rudy Gobert. Some people say Donovan Mitchell. Now I'm gonna break down why each of these guys deserve it and why they don't. Now let's start off with Rudy Gobert. Let's, let's get the hate out the way. This man has been paid the biggest contract in NBA history for a big man, and this man has one move in his arsenal. That's laying the ball up on pick and roll. That's it. It's not Shaq, not Hakeem, not KG, not Carl Anthony Towns, not Joel Embiid. None of these players got the contract that Rudy Gobert has. For, for, some, for some defense? Come on, bro. I know it's Utah. Y'all don't get a lot of free agents. And y'all want to keep y'all stars locked down. But damn, bro. Unbiased, I do get what Rudy Gobert brings to the Utah Jazz. He's a great team defender. Literally, without Rudy Gobert, their on and off numbers as a defense is poor. Rudy Gobert anchors that defense in many ways that other players that I just named cannot do. There's other great defensive players, but they don't really anchor a defense like Rudy Gobert. The only player I can think of is Anthony Davis, not Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid is a great one-on-one -on -one defender. He's a great team defender as well, but he doesn't change the whole gravity of that side of the ball like Rudy Gobert has. But at the same time, nobody is game planning for Rudy Gobert on the offensive end. Rudy, he's not like Ben Wallace was, but you know what I'm saying? He's seven feet long arms. He's gonna put the ball in the rim more times than not. And he's a great pick and roll player. Um, you better be when you that goddamn big. So he's gonna give you 12 to 15 points a night. And that's good. You know what I'm saying? When he's giving you MVP level defense, he completely changed the game of how players should defend the pick and roll, defend drop coverage, defend everything in the paint you know what i'm saying he's he's changing the way that big centers are looked at as a prospect coming into the nba which i i like that for you rudy gobert what gobert has over donovan mitchell in my opinion he has the analytic stats so a lot of blog people people who cover the team who don't really watch a lot of games who want to be smarter than everybody else say oh his rpm is his per his his defensive rating is the best in the league da 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 so he's automatically better than donovan mitchell because donovan mitchell doesn't really have those analytical numbers and i can tell you why donovan mitchell skill set and the type of player he is it doesn't really reward analytics and rudy gobert's eyes on the math he's a very efficient player he's great on defense and he's a great rebounder those stats right there being a great defender and being a great rebounder have you heavily favored in the analytical analytical department just period that's why you see a lot of big men up top a lot of these math charts that we see on twitter on espn it's nothing wrong with analytics nothing wrong with it but you can't use that as an end-all be-all in your basketball analysis at the end of the day bro we have to watch the games that's what basketball is entertainment it's not a math subject math wasn't fun when i was nine years old and it's not fun in my 20s and we also seen Rudy Gobert get outplayed, get played off the floor actually in the playoffs against the Stephen Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green Warriors. He was played off the team because the Warriors shoot a lot of threes and Rudy Gobert is an inside defender. He's not gonna switch and when he does switch, that boy be spinning like a ballerina. It's bad. So Rudy Gobert is a great defender, a great team defender. I said team defender, but if you want him to switch like Anthony Davis, 
it's gonna be bad for you because Steph Curry will put that man in the blender or any perimeter player. So yes, Rudy Gobert is, in my opinion, the best defensive big man in the NBA, but also he's not as versatile as Anthony Davis, as Draymond Green. So you can't really play him in every situation on the basketball court. Also, he doesn't spread the floor. So the offense of the Utah Jazz is limited with Rudy Gobert not shooting a mid-range jumper, much less a three-point shot. Let's get to Donovan Mitchell. Now, if you new to my channel, you know that I like analytics, I like stats, but I also like buckets. I like watching basketball. Some of y'all don't like watching basketball. Y'all like to know about basketball. Y'all like to have the upper hand and the argument about basketball, but some of y'all really don't like basketball for real, unless it's a top two player going off. Y'all don't really like basketball. When I watch Donovan Mitchell play basketball, it brings tears to my eyes how a 6'1 guy who nobody believed in coming out the draft can literally drop 20 on anybody on any given night like that. He's fearless, he's confident, he will shoot a three-pointer, a half-court, floater, mid-range, layup, everything. And he will also dunk on you in the same breath. That's enjoyment. That's what made you basketball fans when you were little. It wasn't because goddamn Shaq was playing great defense. It was because Shaq was dunking on people. The reason you like basketball, the reason why Utah Jazz ticket prices have gone up, have jersey sales has gone up, is because Donovan Mitchell. Now, I know that doesn't have to do with actual on the court basketball, but you have to give credit where credit is due. Now, Donovan Mitchell has very great highs. Last game, the man had 36 points and dropped two Celtics players from three he couldn't miss. It's a treat when you see Donovan Mitchell really go off, especially in the playoffs. He's a treat, but also, he has a very, very bad low when he literally does nothing well on the court. He's turning the ball over. He's missing every shot. He's taking bad shots. He's not getting his teammates involved. He's not playing defense. It's bad. And when your first option technically doesn't have a great game, the whole team shuts down because they don't have a, really a second scorer besides Jordan Clarkson. And we seen Donovan Mitchell at his high. You know what I'm saying? Last bubble. That man looked like prime Michael Jordan mixed with prime Allen Iverson. But before that, that man had one of the worst playoff performances series ever. It's really like this with Donovan Mitchell. And I know he's young, so this is going to go more like this, his consistency. But it's really a wild card with Donovan Mitchell. Like, you know what you're getting out of Rudy Gobert. It's not a lot on the offensive side, but you don't really know what you're getting out of Donovan Mitchell. You're going to get 20 shots. You might go 17 for 20 or 5 for 20. You never know. But you need a guy like Donovan Mitchell in the playoffs. I don't care if Donovan Mitchell shoots 30 times and miss 29. You need that guy in the playoffs to keep the defense honest because without that, the Utah Jazz are really a regular team. I don't think they make the playoffs with Donovan Mitchell like at all. You know what I'm saying? Donovan Mitchell keeps them competitive against some of the great teams. He will go off for 20 in a quarter. You know what I'm saying? He, his skill set is very much better than Rudy Gobert, obviously, because one is one is 11 inches taller than, than one another, but you have to put that in account. Like Mitchell wins in the eye test, Rudy Gobert wins in analytics. Now you need both as an uh, analyst or to judge players, but one should not be the end all be all. But like me, I value eye test more because, you know what I'm saying, it's more enjoy, it's more, it's more fun to watch players play basketball. You know what I'm saying? Now it's easy to build around Donovan Mitchell, much less Rudy Gobert, because you can't have another big man on the floor, another slasher on the floor with Rudy Gobert. With Donovan Mitchell, you can put anybody around him, and he's going to play the exact same way. Now, the bad thing about Donovan is his skill set is a dime a dozen. It's about seven, eight other players who play like him in the sense of scoring all three levels, and they probably do it with more points, better efficiency, and probably better defense. So his skill set is kind of replaceable. Not a lot of teams have that skill set on their team. Like I seen Rudy Gobert get played off the floor in the playoffs, but I also seen Donovan Mitchell shoot his team out of a potential win because he's trying to go for the home run every time down the floor. So it's hard of who you want to take. In my opinion, I'm going to take Donovan Mitchell because I don't really like Rudy Gobert like that. I, I, I didn't like him ever since he cried for not being picked for the All-Star game. Bro, what was you crying for? You was seven feet. You was grown. Why is you crying? And I always love how Donovan is kind of humble, and he likes to go attack. And I like what, how he handled Shaq when he was hating on him. But I think both these players need each other to win, and that's the reason they have the best record in the NBA. It's not because of one player. And I think both these players should not be in the MVP conversation, at least now, maybe 40 games in. But I think both of these players should be All-Stars rather easily. That'd be all for this video, bro. This might be a long-ass video.
12 minutes. I've talked for the whole 12 minutes of this video, basically. But that'd be all for this video, but make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell icon. I know I didn't say hit the bell icon in my older videos, but some of y'all be forgetting. But that'd be all for this video, man. I'm out. Peace.